7,000 employees were put through such a program on a mandatory basis. You might wonder why the New Age has made such apparently striking inroads in the bottom line, practically minded business world. The fact of the matter is that many of these ideas and techniques do prove effective in a wide variety of ways. Bottom line, numerous studies have shown that when employees undergo these programs, the business's overall efficiency and profits rise significantly. This is the overriding reason why this is such a hot trend in today's business world. But as I'll cover later on, yes, any number of New Age practices can sometimes be effective in a cause and effect manner. However, the question that should be asked is, are these practices in line with biblical principles that are righteous and holy, or are they based on tempting counterfeit systems that work for a season but for which a person ultimately pays a price? This is the most important question to ask and answer about any and all phenomenon in our American culture today. By taking the example of how the New Age has made strong inroads into the modern business world, I wanted to give you an indication of how much more widespread the New Age is in society in general, and that in many disguised forms it can be a lot closer to home than sometimes realized. I wish that I could spend the entire evening on this topic alone, for what has been brought to light thus far is but the tip of the tip of the iceberg. At this point, let me share with you a few very general practical principles for analyzing different programs, techniques, and philosophies to see if they may well be based on New Age principles. Now, the issues that can arise here can lead to very complex controversies. In the small amount of time allotted to this subject, I can only offer very general guidelines. One of the most important things to do in this area is to become more aware of the forms and strategies of the New Age. Toward this end, there are any number of excellent Christian books on this subject. In particular here, I'd point to one book, Unmasking the New Age, by Douglas Grothus, put out by InterVarsity Press. I've also made a special cassette tape called Surprising New Age Infiltration in America that addresses this topic in particular to a deeper extent. Now, here are a few discernment principles. Number one, first one is rather obvious but important. First and foremost, being strong in the knowledge and wisdom of the Bible provides a rock-solid foundation and piercing tool of discernment in all these matters. Number two, disguised New Age practices are most often found in these areas. Number one, stress management. Number two, holistic health care. Three, many different types of psychologies. Four, creativity enhancement and intuition building programs. Five, various sorts of self-improvement programs. And six, success and motivation seminars. These are the areas to be most wary about, though not exclusively so. Number three, New Age philosophy is based on the principle that man is not a sinner in need of redemption through Jesus Christ. Many programs and techniques you may come across are based on the glorification of the self, based upon the underlying assumption that man is good, perfect, and even divine by nature. Any philosophy, psychology, or technique that is grounded upon this type of assumption is seriously flawed. This exaltation and glorification of man is extremely common and one of the first things to look for in discernment matters. Number four, often New Age phenomenon are based on devaluating the importance of rational analytical thinking. Instead, there is an emphasis on going beyond the rational mind to gain things like knowledge, wisdom, healing, and self-empowerment. Anytime you see the rational mind being devalued and being placed under inner personal experiences, intuition, or other non-rational states, this should raise a red flag immediately. Number five, along similar lines, beware of practices that are founded upon the person going into different sorts of trance or meditation states. In these trance states, a person is in a state of very deep relaxation and is told to let go of any inhibitions, restraints, and preconceived ideas. Such trance states leave a person exceptionally vulnerable to the replacing of biblical beliefs with other beliefs, and sometimes even demonic intrusion and deception. These trance states often go under a variety of seemingly nice-sounding names, including guided meditation, guided visualization, reverie states, creative visualization, hypnosis, self-hypnosis, centering and imaging exercises, and many others. In all, beware of trance states that can come under these and many other names. In sum here, these five main discernment principles will give you a running start at evaluating many of the ideas and phenomenon that face us in our society today. 
I'd like to give you a phone number of an excellent Christian organization that can minister to people in this regard in terms of discerning New Age versus non-New Age. This organization is called the Spiritual Counterfeits Project, has a phone ministry line called Access, which is available between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., Mondays through Wednesdays, Pacific Time. The phone number is 1-415-540-5767. One of my goals tonight, as we proceed further, is to expose more and more of the basic principles of the New Age, so as to invite you to re-look at the world around you and to piercingly discern those New Age influences that saturate our world today so that we can all avoid them like the spiritual plague that it is. Discernment, in many ways, is half the battle in combating this movement. And a spiritual battle it is when we face the onslaught of the satanic powers that are being unleashed through the New Age. And just before we start to view this movement from this other perspective, that of spiritual warfare, I'd like to draw from themes expressed in Ephesians 6, 10-18 which portrays so well the full armor of the Lord Almighty that soldiers in Christ are to be fitted with. Ephesians 6 tells us clearly that, quote, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is the true nature of the spiritual battle that rages each and every day, and even more so in today's critical times. The Apostle Paul gives us powerful images of the victory armor that we are to put on so that we can stand strong in the Lord's mighty power against the schemes of the adversary. The belt of truth buckled around our waists, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with readiness to venture wherever the Lord leads, taking up the shield of faith so that all the flaming arrows of the evil one may be extinguished, fitting the helmet of salvation and taking up the sword of the Spirit. And with the victory armor in place, Paul entreats us to be alert, alert to the schemes of the devil and opportunities to advance the work of Jesus Christ, and to continually pray for all the saints, all our Christian brethren, who fight the good fight toward the glory of our Father in heaven. Now, in view of our Christian victory armor, we can move on to the next section of this talk, which looks at the New Age from a different perspective, one that penetrates to the real core of the mounting threat that this movement poses on the level of spiritual warfare. This section of the talk is called The New Age Razzle-Dazzle That Blurs, Blinds, and Brainwashes. Drawing from my 15 years of experience in the midst of the New Age razzle-dazzle, now seeing the phenomenon with a new mind in Christ, I'd like to further reveal the inside story of this fast-rising movement. Some of it you may sh find shocking, some pathetic, some surprising, some alarming. But the perspectives I'll be sharing and the issues I'll be raising, I think, are very important for us all to at least give due and considered thought. One of the most common questions people ask about the New Age is, why is the New Age attracting so many millions of people today? And one of the strongest reasons is that there's a lot of power behind this movement, and many people are feeling and experiencing this power when they get involved in these phenomena. This power can feel very good and positive and loving to those who experience it. Unfortunately, the power here is the power of a Luciferic counterfeit light. Another reason that the New Age is so big is that many times its techniques and practices can work for a season. This is to say there are counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders happening throughout the New Age landscape. And these counterfeit workings are attracting people like moths to a flame. The Bible identifies Satan as a liar and the father of lies, and the New Age is one of his most cunning lies going today. Now, there are two different ends to the New Age spectrum. One end is the obviously dark end, and on the other side, the luminous end. In the obviously dark end, you have obviously evil intentions, grotesque darkness, blatant ugliness, which includes such phenomena as Satanism, black witchcraft, voodoo, black shamanism, and others. All these forms compose less than 15% of the total New Age spectrum. For the most part, when I talk about the New Age tonight, I'm referring to the luminous end of the spectrum. Here you have the glittery, glamorous end, where the adversary works his trade as a master counterfeiter to the hilt, making darkness to appear as light, hate as love, and abominations as truth. This is the side of the New Age that parades under the banner cry of love, light, peace, and universal brotherhood. However, it's a peace that is not the peace that passes all understanding. The New Age is a peace that lulls a person to spiritual sleep as it blurs the truth. It's a light that is Lucifer's counterfeit luminosity, 
a luminous darkness that dazzles to the point of blinding the individual. The New Age is a brotherhood that is not brotherhood.